Now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastor. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. What's up? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Obviously, you heard my name 90 times in that intro. You can always call the show. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856 856- Four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now, if this is your first time listening to the show, hi, my name's Ryan Hoppy, and I am the host of this award winning and nationally syndicated circus. You may never know where I may take the show. Hey, that rhymed. One minute I could be talking about how much I can't stand Morgan Wallen and his simp fans, or I could be talking about how much I can't stand Alec Baldwin, but that's the unpredictability of this show. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! I saw this headline here, <laughs> and every Morgan Wallen fan and every country music fan is going to try to defend him because the country music scene is full of love and appreciation, and it's a family with slight racism, and everybody is like, oh, I hope you feel better, Morgan Wallen. 50,000 Morgan Wallen fans are disappointed tonight. As con- I love that old-time, like, announcer voice. Like, yes. I don't even know who this announcer is, but like, yes, I can't read the announcements. I can't read the news on WFLA without talking in that stereotypical boomer voice. Where, yes, we sound like we're announcers. Only person that can pull that off is Jack Harris. 50,000 Morgan Wallen fans are yeah. disappointed tonight. His concert that was scheduled for tonight at Raymond James Stadium has been canceled. Morgan Wallen. Oh, I'm so sorry to all the fans that spent so much money. Wallen posting on Facebook that he needed to reschedule because he was sick. Yeah. <laughs> when all your songs are about getting drunk and not really remembering the night, it's... Hard to believe, Morgan, that the, real, the alleged rumors that you hit up Ybor City and that's where you were drinking last night. Ah, uh, yeah, we're not going to believe that you're sick. Unless you come out and we find out that you have leukemia. That's why I'm being very iffy about this subject. Because I don't want it to come and bite me in the ass. I want to be like, oh, Morgan, why, you know? Morgan Wallen, you're such a piece of garbage. And then it's like, I have stage four cancer. And like, oops. But yeah, I think he had a bad hangover and he's like, I'm sick of touring. The guy seems like such a douchebag. Sorry. You know, all his fans, you want to like think, oh, he's such a good guy. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, maybe it's because of the amount of times I've microdosed, but I can feel energy. And he comes off like a brat. He comes off like he's too cool for the room. He's kind of like a country music early 2010s Justin Bieber. Like, just annoying. He should probably quit drinking. But if he were to go sober, that would ruin his whole career. He says he powered through last night, but he woke up feeling way worse today. Mm. So he's moving tonight's Tampa show to October 4th. He is. I will give him credit for this. I bet it's really hard to sing when you're hungover. <laughs> I bet it's so impossible to go out there and sing your average music to all your fans. I think that they, they think that you care about them. That's what I love about country music, and it's full of some good people, some racism. But um, overall, if oh, a ra- wrong button. Overall, a lot of racism. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery. Here's what I'm telling you. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't know you exist. 
Now you could go and say, Ryan, you're talking about him on your award-winning nationally syndicated podcast slash radio show. So why are you talking about him but telling people not to care if you're caring on your show? Because I'm doing this for content. This is a bit. I look at the guy, and he doesn't seem very likable. He doesn't seem like somebody you want to hang out with. Like, yeah, I brought Morgan Wallen. <laughs> Only thing he'd be good for is bringing a keg of Jack Daniels. <laughs> oh, I bet you would have the most wicked hangover if you were to hang out with Morgan Wallen. I bet your hangover, you'd be sick for three days. He is also postponing next week's shows in Charlotte. And he- That's the thing. He's postponing next week's shows in Charlotte. So either he's manifesting that he's going to have a week-long hangover or he's actually sick. What happened to the good old days where you just powered through it? How do you think the Rolling Stones did it? And here's a little twist. The artist that was scheduled to open for Morgan Wallen is now apparently looking for another venue where he can still perform tonight. That's Jelly Roll posting on social media that he was trying to find a place. He wrote, Dear Tampa, I am working hard to put together something for y'all somewhere tonight. So Yeah, and then I uh, saw some of the live videos of him. He was at the Dallas Bowl. And the uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, segment's not going to be going on the radio because I'm going to be trashing the Dallas Bowl. But the Dallas Bowl speakers, the equipment in there, sounds like this. So when he was performing on Facebook Live, it didn't sound great. But the scenery at that Jelly Roll show, mm-hmm. I'm sure with all the girls that go to a country music show, that it's probably hard for him to stay loyal to his former OnlyFans wife. Oh, I'm sure it's very easy. <laughs> the girls that go to country music shows, oh my goodness. Now they're all religious and MAGA, and they like fishing, and they like pickup trucks. But they're beautiful. Your average beautiful country music listener is her name's like I don't know, Libby. Hey, it's Libby. I'm on Bumble. I'm 25. I'm 25. I'm looking for my man. Mm-hmm. And then your average male that hooks up with Libby at a concert it's like, Caleb. <laughs> oh, it's Caleb. Those are actual names from past experiences that listen to country music. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, I want to tell you that uh, last year in the radio station van, I got a lap dance from a girl named Libby. Mm-hmm. She called herself Princess Libby, and she was crazy. I was never able to go all the way with her. I don't know why. She just, I just wasn't really projecting the energy. I'm not saying that I deserved it. I'm not putting her above me. But I was like, come on. Let's, let's, let's go. We can go to my, my apartment. You know when a girl is like 50-50 if she wants to have sex with you, and you're like starting to simp to them? I've noticed this simp whole thing going on with men lately where people were like, oh. She's so busy. Uh, I haven't seen my girl in two weeks. She's so busy. No one's ever too busy for you. Mm -hmm. That's why I broke up with my last few girlfriends is they just lost time for me. And I went, okay, see ya. See ya later. See ya later, alligator. (laughs) I'm a dick. I'll admit it. I'm classy. I'm a nice guy. I'm a gentleman. I hold the door for you. I do things. I'm a giver. I'll go down on you. But I'm not like the nicest guy. I'm a, I'm a good person, not a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Nice guys always finish last. I'm not doing the whole old school Tom Likas routine where he was like, yes, every woman is awful. You got to Google Tom Likas, L-E-Y-K-I-S. Every woman's the worst thing ever. Like this 101. I used to listen to him, so I'm just kind of projecting. Like this 101. All women suck. Don't treat them well. Be, 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 be. Here's the thing. There was some truth to that. You gotta be your own man. To all the dudes out there that are simping over girls. Oh my fucking god. You know how many dudes want to get in their pants? Mm-hmm. You know how many dudes are begging? Begging, begging to have sex with them. You know how many dudes at a Morgan Wallen show that got canceled because he's an alcoholic? You know how many of them want to hook up with a Libby? 
You know how many Caleb's want to hook up with a Libby? Why don't you be the one that just doesn't, you know, hit them up? There's been plenty of girls in my life that just I was texting them and they left me on red and I went, all right, bye. So busy laying down, watching friends. Mm -hmm. (sighs) This generation, man. Everybody's got different approaches. Back in the day, it was the man had money, the warm sit, the woman cooks dinner, and you go to bed. Now, you got women making more money than men. Mm-hmm. Now, today, I want to talk about Joe Biden. So, because of my new syndication deal, mm-hmm. I talk in ten minute segments, and then in the podcast, I play uncensored, old school rap music that's unlicensed. That's not played on the radio. But uh, if you ever hear me talk for more than 10 minutes at a time, you're getting an exclusive segment that's not going on the radio. You know how Bubba Army. <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge. You know how Bubba has Bubba Army? Mm-hmm. I have Hoppy's Homies. Mm-hmm. Hoppy's Oh, I almost said it. I almost became Don Imus. Uh, well, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You're hearing an exclusive segment. As you guys know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, I am not going to be voting this presidential election. Mm -hmm. The only election that honestly matters is if I make the ballot for the Creative Loafing Best of the Bay podcast. And that's where you go to vote for Happy Hour as Best Podcast. I'll let you guys know that in a few weeks. But this upcoming election, yeah, I'm going to take a pass. What's it on Tuesday? I'll hit the gym. I'm not voting for a brain-dead, embarrassing dementia patient and a narcissistic, sociopathic womanizer. So we have Joe Biden speaking to the world. This is our world leader. The guy that speaks to the whole world. Leader of the free world. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe my eyes. A lot of times whenever Joe Biden says something really fucking dumb, mm -hmm, uh, a lot of times I have to make sure that it's not AI because this isn't 2019 where like videos are 100% real. But my goodness, (laughs) I have so much to talk about with Joe Biden. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, Let me start off with the goodie. This is him uh, introducing his butt buddy known as Zelensky. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, yeah. who has as much courage as he has mm. determination. And balls. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> I was at a kava bar. What a surprise. Ryan Hoppy at a kava bar. I was at a kava bar when this was announced, and I had to like triple check to make sure this was real. Introducing Zelensky as President Putin. It's like talking to Winston Churchill and being like, ah, President Stalin. Much courage as he has determination. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. And he said it again, and then he turns to the right to introduce the person that's not there. And then Zelensky is just standing there like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? Hey, President Putin. <laughs> President Zelensky. He said it like five times. <laughs> I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Yeah. Anyway, Mr. President. I'm better. You are a hell- I'm better. Uh, no. <sighs> I don't know. It gets even better. <laughs> that wasn't it. I know this is a few days old, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But here is um, Joe Biden talking about his vice president, who's totally not a career side chick. Mm-hmm. Kamala Harris totally didn't ruin the marriage of the San Francisco mayor that she slept with in the 90s. Mm -hmm. She's your typical sleeping your way to the top. Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. Do I think she was not qualified? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. Oh, my goodness. He's given Donald Trump all this content for those annoying TV ads. 
And then you have this. You have a reporter. You, oh, my goodness. I just burped. You have a reporter latching out to Joe Biden mm-hmm, about him calling Zelensky Putin. And he does it again. I wanted to ask you um, about your uh, you mixed up uh, President uh, Zelensky and Putin earlier mm. today. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that um, dumb, and you now have sort of your that dumb fucking love. <laughs> Fuck you, Joe Biden. Ugh, I can't stand him. I'm just I'm playing this video and in the uh, video is showing the last frame and it's him smiling. There's nothing worse than a Joe Biden smile. Your key allies, including the British Prime Minister, the President of France. I love whenever he smiles and then you can see his face turn to serious. Like he goes, ha, 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 Zelensky and Putin earlier today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand by them. Um, and you now have sort of your key allies, including the British Prime Minister, the President of France, mm. uh, and the German Chancellor having to step in and make excuses for you on that. Um, and officials here are saying off the record that your decline has become noticeable. Hasn't this now, frankly, become damaging for America's standing in the world? Thank you. I love hearing somebody with an accent from another country telling us that we're screwed. <laughs> Did you see any damage to our standing in my leading this conference? <laughs> That's how he talks. Have you seen a more successful conference? He gets so creepy, too. He gets all mad. He goes from ha, 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 ha to this. Thank you. Did you see any damage to our standing in my leading this conference? It's like he's putting together nine words. You see any damage in this conference? It's like he's muttering and you hear every fifth word. You see any damage to the conference? Have you seen a more successful conference? Yeah. What do you think? And the move, the Putin. Oh, real successful when you're calling the person that you're giving money to being the Ukraine and Zelensky, when you're calling him the arch rival. So successful. <laughs> President of the fucking year. Mm hmm. <laughs> I was talking about Putin and I said, and now, yeah. at the very end, yeah. I said, here, I mean, Putin. I said, oh, no, I'm sorry, Zelensky. He did it again. Ah, oh, dementia patient. <laughs> Why is it going to have to take for him to get out of office for us to finally hear that he has dementia? No, he has Parkinson's in the cold. He might have that, but he has dementia. And then I. And the thing is, when he freezes, I sometimes think that the video's frozen. Mm hmm. And five other names. Look, guys. Yeah, come on, guys. Yeah, I, That's what he does. Whenever he begins babbling and he doesn't know what he's saying, he did it to George Stephanopoulos in the interview. Come on, guys. Come on, George. Come on, guys. I'm Joe Biden. Come on, guys. Come on. Idea? Anybody suggest hmm. that that uh, we have? It's not 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Everyone says online that he's the most alert with 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is like this is like beyond bedtime. And had an incredibly successful conference. If you're having to tell people that your conference is successful, it probably isn't. <laughs> How about that video of him trying to kiss the president of Italy? And she's like, ugh. How many times did you hear yeah. in that conference? Yeah, in the conference. I don't know if it sounds too self serving, but. If you're having to say it's too self serving, it is. Other leaders, heads of state, in thanking me, saying the reason we're together is because of Biden. Ah, uh, now it's all about you, buddy. What are they going to say? It's, we're here because of Trump. We're here because of Obama. You're the president. Of course, they're going to say your name. <laughs> That's like being on a bad basketball team and being like, the play-by-play -play announcer keeps saying Cade Cunningham of the Detroit Pistons. You're in the room. It doesn't mean you're good. Because Biden did the following. Yeah. Look, folks. Biden ruined this country. Folks, this is, uh, well, anyway. That's the smartest thing he's ever said, this. This is, uh, well, anyway. Sad, man. <laughs> Dumb fuck. Can't stand him. Again, I don't know if you noticed, this is not a segment going on the radio because we're 20 minutes over and I just am mad. Leaders of your own party have said that uh, they're not worried about uh, that debate. They're worried about the next bad night and the bad night after that. How can you reassure the American people uh, that you are up to the task and that there won't be more bad nights at debate stage or somewhere else? Antonio after him, which shows they're done with Biden. Personally, about Zelensky. 
I love how Alex Jones has to add his <laughs> his two cents into the video. <laughs> I mean, I know I add my two cents into videos, but my God, damn, Alex Jones. <laughs> Uh, that you are up to the task and that there won't be more ah, bad nights at debates or somewhere else. To go after him. Alex Jones, Manikow, Rover, Mike Calta, Bubba, who else? Billy Madison. They all sound like that. This is Rover's Morning Glory. This is Mike Calta. This uh, is Mike Calta. This is Bubba the Last Lunge. Manikow's Morning Madhouse. Alex Jones. You all talk with fake voices. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHappyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Um, so in that video, he says he is not the commander in chief. I was going to play it. It wasn't a bad video, but it has Alex Jones talking. And uh, he's another piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. I can't stand him. I feel like the first 20 minutes is a little tense. It's a little out there. It's a little outspoken. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Sometimes you got to have the tough decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm in public and I'm in social situations, I'll start ranting and people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. People aren't always down with it. That's why here I never hold back. Because this is the one time that people really want to hear my ranting. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? I think you do. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. This next song that I'm going to play here. If you don't feel like listening to it, you can skip forward four minutes. But when the Chicago Bears made it to the Super Bowl in 2007, B96 and the Eddie and Jobo show, they made their own version of the 1985 Super Bowl shuffle. Mm -hmm. This was called Amplify. And this randomly came to my mind the other day. And I looked it up on YouTube and this video is 17 years old. This was the anthem of the Chicago Bears when they peaked in my lifetime. Bears football! Pocket closes, hit in the chest, and down he goes! Snap to Grossman, handing off, Thomas Jones! Handing off, benching up the middle at the five! Throws down to the third, oh! Buried inside the five, to the goal line, end zone! Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown, Bears! Bear fans, your dream is reality. Begin the migration to Miami. And Super Bowl 41. Hit it! Just like this back in 85, Sunday's the day the city comes alive. Dominating every game on Lakeshore Drive. One way to Miami, enjoy the ride. Non-stop, like a runaway train. The number one D, and we bring in the pain. All in with the blitz, and we stop in the run. There's no Super Bowl shuffle till the job is done. I don't even know where to begin, because no way out the best stand on either side of the pigskin. Racking up the touchdowns and field goals is sick. The Bears bumping hits like B96. We got a quarterback with an arm like a laser. A set of linebackers be shocking them like tasers. Everyone in my city get ready for the ride. Something about these Bears got me amplified. Yo, why is everybody so amplified? Amplified. Do I just yeah. It's the Bears, yo. It's the Bears. Eleven beasts in Chicago, full throttle, popping offenses, bobble, defenses crumble, stumble all day. When they come to play, the monsters of the midway respect the team that paint the city orange and blue. Love you running in another ring is past due. The Bears repping the shot when visitors pass through. When offense is stacked in the defense, ooh. It's halftime, refuel the tank, then snap, hold. That's three in the bank. You tuned in, B96, AP Lou Rocks, who you vibing on. with? One coach, one team, one city. We all live. Best fans, you gotta rep your orange and blue The new shake at the lake, this is how we do it Yo, why is everybody so amplified? Run the 
is scared if my jersey red 18 on the 4th of February. No mercy, Bears team defense descends offenses. The senseless, defenseless when Rex connects relentless. Shh, be quiet. Proving all the haters wrong and they can't deny it. Everybody in the shot getting all mm. We're making history, critics bad or <gasps> day without a while. They pounded with fences. Swole like Thomas Jones and money like Robbie Gold. Making all the ponies go when Lovey's Bears around. No yeah. 17 years ago. My God. Now it's time to end this. Got it. To the city where the wind blows. Black coach winning Super Bowl. Woo! Oh, yeah. Taking it back to 2007. It's the Bears, y'all. It's the Bears. It's the Bears, y'all. I was in seventh grade. The cool part about being born in 93 was each year in the 2000s represented what grade I was in. So in the year 2000, I was in kindergarten. So I was in the uh, grade zero. In first grade, I was in 2001, so one. 2002, second grade. 2012, I graduated. So the 12th grade. You get what I'm saying? Riveting. I know you guys are like, oh my God, I'm glad I know what year you graduated. It made us feel old. <laughs> This following segment has been brought to you by the best Kava and Kratom around. Mitra-9.com. Mitra-9. M-I-T-R-A-9.com. For the best Kava and Kratom around. And at checkout, use keyword Hoppy. H-O-P-P-E. To save 20%. Syndicated across the world and heard exclusively on every podcasting platform by searching Hoppy Radio. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, uh, yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio, at the gmail.com. Now, on this show, I discuss the original elite and how they always win. And sometimes when I say it, I like to think that there is, you know, any hope that the original elite don't always win. But no, the original elite always win. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! When discovery has been produced late, prejudice does not accrue unless the evidence is material and the disclosure is so late that it undermines the definition, the defendant's preparation for trial. The court concludes that this conduct is highly prejudicial to the defendant. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and this disclosure during the course of trial is so late that it undermines the defendant's preparation for trial. There is no way for the court to right this wrong. Lesser sanctions under Harper. Trial courts possess broad discretionary authority to decide what sanction to impose when a discovery order is violated. State mm. versus Lemire. What does that mean? The sanction of dismissal is the only warranted remedy. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and a mistrial would not be based upon manifest necessity. Further, the sanction of dismissal is warranted in this case. The state is repeatedly... Oh, look at Alec Baldwin crying. You killed somebody, even if it's on accident. What are you crying about? You were going to get away with it the whole time, you beta male. ...representations to defense and to the court that they were compliant with all their discovery obligations. Despite their repeated representations, they have continued to fail to disclose critical evidence to the defendant. Brady and Harper are satisfied. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted. Court also has power, inherent power. Per State v. Lemire, where discovery violations inject needless delay into the proceedings, courts may impose meaningful sanctions to effectuate their inherent power and promote efficient judicial administration. The state's discovery violation has injected a needless, incurable delay into the instant jury trial. 
Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system and the efficient administration of justice. Your motion to dismiss with prejudice is granted. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was a minute and a half to say that the rich elite always win. The rich elite are always going to win. If that was any other person, any other, maybe F-rate actor, someone that you've never heard of that did what Alec Baldwin did, number one, the trial wouldn't have been pushed three years where it's hard to get the evidence, and B, the person would not just be dismissed. Unfortunately, the rich and elite always win. And it says a lot about a man as Alec Baldwin is nothing more than a beta male, a sociopathic piece of garbage. Why are you crying? You got away with it. He's the worst. Unfortunately, on this planet, the rich and elite always win. The rich and elite always win. I'll say it again. The rich and elite always win. Alec Baldwin got away with beating up photographers. He's had road rage, inc- road rage incidents. He went off on his daughter in that phone call. He's done awful things, but because he has money and he has connections, he always wins. And unfortunately, we need to accept it. We need to. It's unfortunate. Oh, so I else pulled the trigger. We know you did it, Alec. You just pushed back the case three years. You had all your rich and elite buddies fix it for you. And because it's such old news, it was hard to prosecute you. Now, if uh, your charges were dropped, Hannah Gutierrez's charges should be dropped. Mm-hmm. She didn't pull the trigger. You can't just drop all the charges. It's ridiculous. It's infuriating. I think it was a Ray Donovan situation, like that show where the fixers of the rich and elite always fix things. And I think under the table, they just made it go away. And now we're going to have to hear about his dumb show with his nine kids. They're going to grow up to be spoiled, unfortunately, because they have a dirtbag of a dad and a wife who pretends to be Hispanic for attention because she has no personality besides getting knocked up by Alec Baldwin. Ridiculous. It's sad. I feel bad for Helena Hudgensons. I feel bad for her husband. I believe that's her name. I feel bad we, we forgot her name at this point. I knew Alec Baldwin wasn't going to go to jail or even get probation. But to have it dismissed? Come on, man. So infuriating. Because now he's going to walk around... Like he's innocent. You're not innocent. I know you didn't mean to pull the trigger, but any other average Joe, any other person, that trial would at least go on. But to have it dismissed on day two, that's because of your connections. I hope you know this, Alec. I don't care that you're friends with Howard Stern and you've been on SNL and you're on one of the biggest sitcoms of the 2010s and 2000s known as 30 Rock. No one likes you. You're a terrible person. Your own daughter hates you. When it's all said and done, everybody hates you. This is not me projecting. You will be remembered as the guy who was reckless with a gun, but because of the money that he earned from making a lot of good movies, he was able to get away with essentially taking the woman's life. On accident, but shame on that judge. Mm-hmm. It is so infuriating. At least go with the trial and then find him innocent or something, but to just dismiss it after day two? And then, I know this is completely off subject, but you have people sitting in prison because of marijuana. Mm -hmm. You have people sitting in prison for the littlest crimes. Hannah Gutierrez is getting a year and a half. (sighs) I can't believe it. I knew he wasn't going to go to prison. Alec Baldwin was not going to prison. But to just dismiss it? That's how messed up this country is. And that's all we're going to talk about with Alec Baldwin. I see that a prosecutor called him a CS. I'm trying to keep it clean for the radio. Uh, that's real classy. I don't know what to say. I can't believe it. He got away with it. Any other person does it. If I do that, 
I'm getting like a year and a half. Oh, but you made Beetlejuice and played yourself on 30 Rock. You played your unlikable self on 30 Rock. You should get whatever you want in life. And you do a really good impersonation of Donald Trump, which doing an impersonation of Donald Trump is like saying one plus one is two. It's very easy to impersonate him. I'm mad. I am furious. I said this in a social situation recently, and people couldn't believe it. I despise Alec Baldwin with all my heart. Mm -hmm. I can't stand. I don't know if you can tell by my last rant for the last 10 minutes, but if there is one celebrity that I just think is repulsive, that I think is disgusting, it's Alec Baldwin. But unfortunately, on this planet, when you have money, you can get away with whatever you want. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm very frustrated. I think we should take a break. Here's the deal. When you hear this music, that means it's time for me to go to a break. We're going to talk about happier subjects after this. I am not talking about Alec Baldwin's dumb reality show. I am not going to talk about Alec Baldwin's dumb wife or anything else anymore. He is banned from this show. Now that the case is over, there's no reason for me to get worked up. I don't want to be like one of those radio hosts where they talk about something over and over again. And you hear about it every day. It's over. Alec Baldwin got away with him. Good for you. But we're never going to talk about you again. You are banned from Hoppy Hour. You can always call me. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Send me a cat video on Instagram. I need, I need to be cheered up. Okay. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Do not touch that radio dial or that smart device. However the hell you're listening to Hoppy Hour. We'll be right back. Hang on. <laughs> Happy Hour. Happy Hour will be right back. All right. I'm really worked up. You got a vasectomy? Well, oh, I got my sound effects playing. The show is all out of sorts right now. It's a circus. It's going, I'm going crazy. I'm losing my mind because Alec Baldwin got away with something. So here's the deal I'm also microdosing. Probably shouldn't listen to that and give myself a panic attack. I want to play a banger right now. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward four minutes. But here is a song. It's Vi, V-I with Herda featuring GLC, one of the greatest songs of all time. Unfortunately, life's not fair because this rapper should have blown up. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. I'm not in tune with something beautiful right here. Yeah. Something epic. Big, somebody, this official. Matthias. Let's make it. Look, I was being a nice guy. I lead that to them dudes that shoot hoops. I'd rather roll through in a new coupe with chicks that get 200 to do shoots. Rolling a shooby dooby while we listen to smooth grooves. Dude, I tracked and told you I'm hot like magma. And keep them in. I'm stashed up in the Dodge Magnum near the stash of the Magnums. Never know which one I'm going to use. Right there, I got a couple people. Confused, cause I never lose, cause I never snooze. Pops, then I pop this shit, knock you out of your shoes. I shut down crews and rock Taylor May suits and Louis shoes. It's hard to do what I do. Stunning like evil, can evil. Keep a watch face, see through. I do this for my people, sell them through they screen though. My mom said I was a walking felony, cause I kept 16s in the closet like Kelly. Shop with the sellers, selling songs, ain't fucking at them chickens, ain't fucking at them pigs, ain't searching at them birds, ain't chirping on them. Not a mad rapper, come a 
disgruntled MC and I teach you dudes about tussling with me. Truth is, I hate these marks. I should pull this jammy and spark and leave these rappers handicapped park. And when you see your boy out, bow down and kiss the ring. With a crew about myself, I ain't worried about a thing. This is Shot City, man. Where the f you from? And your chick can't go up seeing gobbling. My partner Supreme told me flows hard on these monkeys. I hit pro gems and told them make my wrist chunky. Chain hung like donkey. And fuck them dudes who want it. Nickname beautiful. Keep them breasts on me. Homie, I'm funky like woo. Leg shots to let you know that I'm serious. When them blocks get hot, I'm in the streets bare chested. I got money invested. These detectives. My dogs ain't barking at them. Chickens ain't barking at them. Pigs ain't searching at them. Birds ain't chirping at them. Heard them all. This ain't the young and restless. You could say the drama life support boy. Put your life on pause like a comma. When you cutting corners and you stacking money, it's again turn comedians, man. They get to acting funny. I know the MCs, the real MCs. Same old same dude, man. Them was so shopping with me. Get a pumpkin head in front of your little daughter. You a broke pop machine, get you out of order. I'ma come and get you. Don't make me keep me hit you with the shells like a snail or armadillo. Watch the blue lights with the blue films. Slice it, slice it, make them look like he got gills. This ain't artificial, man, this real. Throw him in like Michigan and hope the nigga can't swim. And if he can't, I guess he won't live. Giving names, get your change. He ain't hate a bill. Ain't nothing, Charlie. Let's go. I am the grand. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best honey around. DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. The best CBD Delta 8 around at DZBZHoney.com. You can get honey sticks, lollipops, la 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 lollipops, the rapper. And you can also get a jar of honey. For all the info, dzbzhoney.com, use keyword hoppy, H O P P E. What everyone else is afraid to say, Ryan Hoppy will say for you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. That's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail dot com. If this is your first time listening, hi, my name is Ryan Hoppy, and this is my award winning circus. You never know where I may take the show. Hey, that rhymed. Let's talk about Serena Williams. Mm-hmm. As she was the host of the ESPYs, which I know this is what everybody says when they hate on something, but they go, I didn't even know the ESPYs were on. But I don't know one person that watched the ESPYs. Mm-hmm. But then again, you got to talk about other people for attention, right? I would know about that. No! Happy Hot Topic! Serena Williams slams Harrison Bucker during 2024 ESPYs, which... Did I agree with what Harrison Booker said? No. But the fact that people keep talking about him, A, proves that his speech worked, and B, you're just giving him attention. Mm-hmm. 
Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. Serena Williams is calling out Harrison Butker during the 2024 ESPYs. The tennis champion put Harrison Butker on blast as she hosted the annual sports award show at Los Angeles Dolby Theater on July 11th. Ugh, she's wearing one of those wigs that is so not her hair. Like Howard Stern. While discussing impressive feats performed by female athletes on stage with sister Venus Williams and presenter Quinta Brunson, Serena takes a dig at the Kansas City Chiefs kicker, who recently came under fire for controversial comments he made about women in a Benedictine College commencement speech. I mean, again, it kind of reminds me of like when you go through a bitter breakup and the ex is like, I don't need the man. I don't need to talk about him for attention. But then that's all you talk about. All these people out there that were offended by Harrison, you're just promoting his speech. More people are going to watch it. People will be like, what? That was two months ago. When you talk about something you don't like, you're just giving a life. <laughs> so go ahead and enjoy women's sports like you would any other sports because they are sports. Yes. Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. When did he say that women can't play sports either? I don't know. <laughs> A very woke ESPN. I'm surprised they didn't have Stephen A. Smith out there yelling. Mm -hmm. Ugh. What has happened to ESPN? At all. Like ever. Although Harrison was in attendance at the ceremony, cameras did not capture his reaction to Serena's comment. They should have. That's a bad camera job by the uh, ESPN guy. Harrison's recent remarks include suggesting to the graduates that women, quote, have the most diabolical lies told to them. As and then the thing is, you can agree or disagree with it, but it's an opinion. And in America, you're allowed to have opinions. Do I think he's wrong and probably sexist and a terrible person? Yes, but you can disagree with someone. Well, as stating that the woman in the audience should be, quote, most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Don't get mad at him. He's Roman Catholic. He doesn't know any better. As for Serena, the tennis champion and her husband Alexis Ohanian step out for a rare red carpet appearance with their daughter Olympia. Mm. Serena wears a figure-hugging black gown. You know who wears the pants in their relationship. <laughs> that features a bejeweled neckline, while her six-year-old daughter walks the red carpet in a patterned white dress and metallic silver sandals. You know when uh, Serena said that, she's like, her husband's like, oh, brother, here she goes again. Yeah, in that relationship, we know who's whipped. Mm -hmm. Definitely him. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. I see this also in the news. Oh, happy Hot Topic! Patrick and Brittany Mahomes are expanding their team. The Kansas City Chiefs quarterback and wife Brittany announce on Instagram they are expecting their third child together. Honestly, I think Patrick Mahomes might be the one NFL player that doesn't cheat. Yeah, Brittany Mahomes has her flaws of just being annoying, but hey, good for them. The adorable video reveal of the news shows the family all together posing for pictures, while kids Sterling Sky, who's three, and 19-month-old Patrick Bronze Levon play. Oh, that's cute. So there's a bunch of kids. I'm not going to rip into a family. There's breaking news as I'm recording this on July 13th, Saturday at 3:26 p.m. This just came in on E News. Harrison Bucker responds to Selena Will Serena Williams, not Selena. Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. Harrison Butker is weighing in on Serena Williams' ESPY's comment. One day after the tennis legend served up quite the dig at the Kansas City Chiefs kicker while reflecting on achievements by women athletes at the 2024 ESPY Awards, he responds to the viral moment. As he told NBC News in a statement on July 12th, I thought Mrs. Williams was a great host and applaud her for using her platform to express her beliefs on a variety of topics. 
Exactly. You can have disagreeing opinions. We live in this world where we think we have to agree all the time and everyone's opinion is correct. Mm -hmm. Sports are supposed to be the great unifier and not an event dedicated to celebrating a diverse group of men and women who have accomplished great feats. She used it as an opportunity to disinvite those with whom she disagrees with from supporting fellow athletes. Listen, do I think Harrison Bucker is annoying? Yes, but I'd rather hang out with him than Serena. Serena's obnoxious. Mm -hmm. She's never wrong. She's a narcissist. During the July 11th ceremony, Serena, her sister Venus Williams. Well, we know that already, but that was just breaking, and I had to let you guys know that, you know. Because the video is going on for two more minutes, and it's just going to re-say what happened. And da -da 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 -da. Good for Harrison responding. You know Serena's not going to respond. Because that's what happens. When narcissists get caught, all of a sudden, you never hear from them. Also, McDonald's is bringing back the smoky BLT quarter pounder with cheese. I'm sure that meal will be seven fifty. dollars <laughs> uh, I used to love going to McDonald's. But honestly, you know what's been great about the inflation? <laughs> is I've lost weight. And here's why I've lost weight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I used to be lazy and not grocery shop. And if I was hungry, I was like, ah, whatever. I'll go to Wendy's. But now that everything is so expensive, I have my food delivered from Aldi's here in America. I believe there's some in uh, the UK. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've lost weight. I work out every day. Honestly, you got to find blessings whenever you see the uh, inflation going up. And I just quit going to McDonald's. I was giving McDonald's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And they probably notice it. They go, hey, who's the guy not getting five McDoubles? Where's he at? Where's Ryan Hoppy and his five McDoubles? 856-49-HOPPY. <laughs> it's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. At Ryan Happy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. <laughs> Coming up next on Happy Hour, we have so much to get into, but if you're listening on the radio, I appreciate it. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in Missouri, Savannah, if you live in Detroit, Tampa, Fort Myers, North Carolina, the UK, I record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. This is designed as a morning radio show and a podcast. I never hold back and I always speak my mind. Go to RyanHoppyRadio.com for all the info on this award-winning show. Hey, that rhymed. And if you want to hear more of my show, go to every single major platform that has a podcast and search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Do not touch that computer. Do not touch that smart device, that radio, however the hell you're listening to Hoppy Hour. <laughs> Radio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. All right, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I say this before every song, but I have to keep saying it because it's kind of fun, too. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward four minutes, but here is Chicago by LAP Bogus Boys. <laughs> What you know about the middle of the map Gangsters in them all black White socks fitted caps 
Posted on the block, 30 shot clip hanging. This ain't a rap trend, shot town, bim bang. Shootouts every night, they complaining that they can't sleep. It's a church and a liquor store all on the same street. Rain, sleet, snow, man. I'm a hustle, cocaine. All sales final, I'm a product of this dope game. Shot is got no aim, bullets got no name. Cluckers dancing in a line like they on Soul Train. We don't care about blue lights, come take a picture. Still tipping, that's the day of us. Chicago, yeah. nigga, this the city of the wind. wind. Niggas on the corner trying to win. Chicago, nigga, stay hustling in the snow. snow. Niggas even hustling in the snow. Yeah. You see yeah. them blue lights in the air. Cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tipping. Chicago, nigga. Where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow Chicago yeah. nigga these cops crooked in Chicago. Daily took them out them crown fix and bought them tie hoes. In traffic, I don't panic when I see them police lights. I got them pigs in my pockets like Jody White. Hustling that white snow, temperature is ice cold. My worker serving with them cameras on a light pole. Gangster disciples, black stones, BEDs. The biggest street gang is the CPDs. The sleeve on my triple goose smell like gunpowder. Hawk blowing like a car horn stuck in rush out. Yeah, the Swiss cheese you drive a side door. This how it is, this how we live in Chicago, nigga. This the city of the wind. Niggas on the corner trying to win. Chicago, nigga. Stay hustling in the snow. Niggas even hustling in the snow. Yeah, you see them blue lights in the air. Cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tipping. Chicago, nigga. Where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow uh, Chicago, yeah, nigga Land of the players in a home to all the gangsters Shucks. Well, you better pick a side if you plan to make it uh, And when you ride through the shag, keep that hat straight in yep. Before they find you tied up in that pitch black basement uh, Cameras on the pole, flicking pitches, niggas still pitching Got the block, jalapeno hot, but it's still tipping Slickers flipping on me, trying to plan they itchy on me Cause they ran my government, name and got the history on me you know we gang pain in Chicago right. Even though the structure done changed in Chicago Uh, that wind blowing in Chicago And when I'm out of town, I let them know I'm from Chicago, Chicago nigga, this the city of the wind yeah. Niggas on the corner trying to win yeah. Chicago, nigga, stay hustling in the snow. snow Niggas even hustling in the snow yeah. You see yeah. them blue lights in the air yeah. Cameras everywhere, yeah. we don't give a fuck, we still see Chicago nigga, where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow, Chicago nigga Oh yeah This foul long segment has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at Amir academy.com when i tell you that he's the best mma trainer in all the bay area i'm a man of my words we will be right back on happy hour after this we have so much to get into call hoppy now 856-49 hoppy tweet at him at ryan hoppy radio he never holds back and he speaks his mind Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Eight five six forty nine happy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio R Y A N H O P P E Radio. You can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com and my Snapchat is Hoppy Radio. Now let's rip into Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Whoa! Happy hot topic. When you look up the word sociopath in a dictionary. 
it shows her annoying face. Mm-hmm. I really feel strongly that I don't want my baby to be in front of a camera. This is the ultimate test. Now, she got knocked up after probably cheating on her ex with this new guy. Uh, but the thing is, if we don't ever hear a word about her, like uh, you see the uh, mom from Catch Me Outside. How about that? She never posts her kid. I'll be honest. She recently got beat up, and that's awful. But all she does is post thirst traps of her looking sexy, which is weird because that Catch Me Outside girl was like 13 when she was uh, famous. And the weird part is a lot of morning radio were like, wait till she turns 18. Which, if you want to know a guy is a creep, if they say to you, wait till she turns 18, you're a creep. But what I'm saying is, at least catch me outside, you never really see a picture of the baby. This is the ultimate test of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Will she keep this kid anonymous? Gypsy Rose Blanchard is in protective mom mode. During a July 12th interview on Good Morning America, Gypsy shares that while she's still in the early stages of her pregnancy, she has already made a major decision for her future child. Hopefully, her kid doesn't have her killed. I will not be putting my child in the media. Mm -hmm. The 32-year-old announced earlier this month that she was expecting her first child with boyfriend Ken Erker. You mean the one that she was with while she was with the Ryan guy? Because listen, her and... Ryan, they broke up like March 28th. I looked it up online, and then she's having a kid in January. So that's nine months later, essentially, about April. So she probably cheated on that goofy-looking guy with this douchebag. <laughs> Which either it the rumor was that it was not planned, that this was an accident. How do I say this? I got a vasectomy, so I can't have kids. But I'm telling you, I'm gonna keep. I'm going to keep this rated G. For the radio. I'm not saying the pull out method always works, but you gotta be careful, especially when you're hooking up with a psychopath like her. And while Gypsy is currently starring in her own lifetime docuseries, Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup, it's not something she wants for her baby. We'll see. And will there be another docuseries down the road? Will the cameras I continue don't know. to roll? <laughs> Because I'm a sociopath. The thing is, she's going to need money to pay for her kid in this world of inflation. I don't know yet. Um, that's You never know what the future holds with that. But Yeah, so she just is hypocritical. But once the baby's born, <laughs> I really feel strongly that I don't want my baby to be in front of a camera. Either she's going to be the best mom ever. <laughs> Or she's going to be a sociopath. Um, unless it's for like home movies. Going on. Bingo. 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 She just said not in front of the camera unless it's for home movies. Isn't her whole reality show pretty much home movies? So she could cash in money. Oh, I'm doing home movies. That's what a reality show is. You see what they're doing throughout the day. This is a 1995 where you have a VHS player. <laughs> She's such a liar. On to reveal the reason why she believes it's safer to keep her child's life private. I don't know, because you're a weirdo and you attract weirdos. This world is so cruel yeah. and unsafe yeah. that there is a level of what? responsibility that I have Got to it. make sure that my child is protected. Oh, well, we'll see. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. It's weird when you see like old pictures of her, like when she was a teenager, and she got so Hollywood up. Like she was a weird looking kid, and then Hollywood got ahead ahead of her. Also, uh, <laughs> this is going on. Oh, happy hot topic. I find this fascinating. I was living with my mother. I felt very alone. Um, I always say that if I had someone um, to tell me hey, it's safe to talk to someone and tell them that you're struggling. Tell them that your home situation is bad. Tell I love how she talks about how bad her home situation was, but she had her mom killed. <laughs> like, I didn't always get along with my dad, but I didn't have him killed. Tell them you're being abused. Um, I wouldn't have committed my crime. Gypsy Rose Blanchard slams people for visiting the house where her mother was killed. So that's why it's important for me to share my story. So 
I love how the headline says where her mom was killed. No, where she killed her mom, allegedly, most likely. Several users on TikTok have posted videos visiting the Missouri home Gypsy lived in with her mom, Dee Dee Blanchard. Listen, people are going to visit. They are into true crime. And the thing is, you're only famous because you had this glow up after, after essentially killing your mom. So embrace your past. You can't have it both ways. You're not a victim. Your mom is. Sorry. Now, I don't know. Like, you know how Mama June, how her daughter recently died? Now, if people were visiting that house where she died, let's say she died at this house, then I would get being mad. That's a different scenario. But your mom dying is why you're famous. Shut up. In one video, Gypsy pops off in the comments, writing, Y'all have no respect or decency. A tragedy happened here in that house. Y'all have no respect or decency. A tragedy happened in that house, yet y'all visit it as if it was the Grand Canyon. The tragedy happened because of you. It wasn't somebody else did it. It wasn't that a crazy ex did it. You're the reason the tragedy happened. And the tragedy is the reason why you're famous, you sociopath. I can't do this. I, I, first, Alec Baldwin today was really getting me mad. And then it was Joe Biden and Gypsy Rose. That represents America for you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me think. Who can't I stand more? Let's play a game show real quick here on Happy Hour because we have two minutes to film. Mm -hmm. Who does Ryan Hoppy hate more? Alec Baldwin, Joe Biden, or Gypsy Rose Blanchard? Or everybody at ESPN because they make Bronny James famous when he's an average basketball player at best. I just felt like playing the circus music. All right. I'm very worked up. I'm mad. The original elite, like I said, they always win. And it's unfortunate, but the sooner you admit it, the better. All right. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can Snapchat me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, R Y A N H O P P E Radio, Ryan Hoppy Radio.com, and Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. So there's always a way to get a hold of me. Coming up next, we're going to talk about more lighthearted topics because I'm getting all worked up right now. But I want to hear from you guys. I record for the hardworking average Joe that grind in life. I don't care mm -hmm. if you live in America or the UK. You have your streaming device, your computer, your radio tuned in to Happy Hour, and that's all that matters. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. <sighs> I'm all worked up. I'm talking about Alex Baldwin and all these famous people. Mm -hmm. That fucking suck. I saw this here. Abraham Lincoln, new documentary claims he had sex with men. We all know that. <laughs> also, it says here, uh, let me see here. Patrick Mahomes Sr. busted for driving with invalid license months after DWI arrest. I feel bad for Patrick. He got his uh, sexual assaulting brother. He got his mom that wears those jerseys. She's like the most innocent one, saying QB maker. Brittany Mahomes is kind of innocent. And then you got his dad who's a drunk and makes him look bad. You got to feel bad for Patrick. I don't know how he keeps it together. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Patrick Mahomes. Like Everybody around you is using you at all times. And you somehow, you make it work, Patrick. That's why he's the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And also, I saw a recent report from BlackSportsOnline.com run by Robert Little, who's one of the best. I saw that he said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that 
uh, Patrick Mahomes is never going to do a roast, and that's a great decision. When you have that much drama in your family, mm-hmm. when you have that many skeletons in your family, mm-hmm. when you have that much madness going on in your family, a brother who's a weirdo and uses you for clout, a dad who literally cannot quit drinking and is always driving, a mom who loves being famous, and we'll leave Brittany alone at some point. Poor Patrick. <laughs> I know he loves his family, but I bet every time he gets an alert, he's like, my goodness, why can't my family just chill? All right. 856-49-HOBBY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Now, if you don't feel like listening to the song, you can skip forward five minutes, but this is Bionic with the fart. Mm-hmm. Six million's what it cost them to put back together that cat Steve Austin. Not the far right is bionic. Over six million tracks with ten million topics. I'm fiber optic crystal clear with my projection. Whack them seats, get clothesline when they walk across my intersection. They need protection, some guidance, some right direction. A job center with application for a new profession. Never set for nothing less. I blaze contests and set shop for paydays. In strange ways, life twist and turn. Word to gang star in this business, thriller hard to earn. I format attack, new knack technique. Speak with a passion on wax and tape and CD. Mad niggas front for paper and switch like a bitch in and out like a crossfader. All I know is how to rock shit. They say the hotter the MC, the hotter the spot. Shit, damn. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit. Damn. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit. Damn. It's the coming. I mean. Lyrics on deck like Tash, pocket full of cash, ready to bounce, roll and splash. C to and hash, pro tour in the masters. Grab the mic, flex my wrist and hit like Sambris. Handle this, make you believe like an evangelist. That real MCs are coming to reclaim Los Angeles. And hence I stand a chance to finally get my time to shine. In the golden state, like spree while out the half. This beat is hot, and make me lock like astronaut. Make K. Rue set that shit for my peoples when we blow spots. Pause. Freeze, my steeds rose like ease. V12 trees and seven seas. If you didn't know, champ, the far by hey, rules a lowlands brother from the liquid with Ken. It's the coming of the Bionic. The far by hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming of the Bionic. The far by hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming of the Bionic. The far by hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming. Get damaged like civilized to savage Sharp lyrics cut deep wounds These niggas need bandages They can't handle this Los Angeles Relentless pressure Full court measure for measure uh-huh. I'm like Patino A game plan can be no Every verse starts with defense first Like a casino uh-huh. Every minute, every hour I use brain power For Mr. Space Shuttle Challenger I devour I tower like Eiffel Bust all verses like rifles Bust all bullets through flesh Unless you're wearing a vest And even then I still enter The human form of a splinter The summer force Spring and winter, Lock, liquid Lock, crew member, member, uh, champion contender, holy like the month of December. The raw uh, prototype. Uh, it's the coming, coming, of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit. Damn, it's the coming of the bionic. Oh yeah. This following segment. 
has been brought to you by Fortify, the best pre and post workout in the game. F O R T I F E Y E dot com. And at checkout, use keyword Ryan20. Also, this is being brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com, the best printing company in all of the Bay Area. Amir Academy of Martial Arts, and much more. All right. We are going to come back on Happy Hour, and we're just going to have so many fucking rants. It's time for Happy in the from Chicago to Cleveland to Tampa Bay, you are plugged into Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856. 49 Javi. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get right into the news here. Whoa, happy hot topic. This headline made me giggle. This is from 10 Tampa here locally in the area we record in. Thank you. A Polk County corrections officer is accused of illegally using a handicap placard to park closer to a grocery store. Polk. You're telling me an authority of any type, a cop or whatever, using their power? <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. County Sheriff's Office says Wania Lilly's car was parked in front of a Highlands City Publix. She told deputies that placard was her mother's, but deputies say that placard was expired and actually belonged to someone else. The Oops. I saw that. That made me giggle. <laughs> this next headline is a little weirder. Frankie Grande is clapping back at bizarre rumors about his sister, Ariana Grande. Frankie Grande sounds like a drink at uh, Starbucks. I'll take a Frankie Grande uh, venti. Hey, the star is responding to a tweet that seems to explain where a viral rumor about his superstar sister being a cannibal started. Mm. The tweet says that fans started the cannibal chatter in an effort to deter people from buying concert tickets. No, it's because people can't afford 350 a ticket. <laughs> and also, you're from Hollywood, so anything's possible. But Frankie is not amused. Although the Nickelodeon star LOLs in his response, he... Oh, you're a star. Everybody's a star whenever you watch any of these news clips. NBA star, NFL star, you're nothing. You write off your sister's clout. Shut up. Writes on X, formerly known as Twitter, on July 11th, quote... Wow, this might be the most creative and lowest y'all have ever gone, mm. reaching new depths daily. He adds, listen, I know my sister's been eating the girls up for years, but this is a bit extreme. Besides, she's vegan. See you on tour. Yeah. Because we're all waiting to see you on tour. Frankie! <laughs> your talentless brother's here. Ariana? He's at the door. He's looking for attention. Who the hell's ever said, oh, I love Frankie Grande? <laughs> now, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I do like her music. It's good breakup music. Whenever I've gone through a breakup, she either has a song, Bye, that comes out, B-Y-E, not B-I, like bisexual, no. Bye, bye, boy, bye. And that came out before my, uh, er, after my last breakup, so that was my breakup song. And then Thank You Next was my song of 2019. So she's kind of like my... Uh, Taylor Swift, if you may. Oh, I saw this headline here. I don't even feel like playing it. Summer COVID-19 hits the U.S. All right. Now, was COVID-19 a big deal? Yes. Should we have locked down everything? I'm not sure. But the media desperately, and I mean desperately, they're like, please. It's like a woman. It's like a man simping over a woman. Please. Please, U.S., please watch us. We'll do anything for views and ratings on COVID-19 because in 2020, our ratings were through the roof. 
The media simps, and I mean simps, over COVID-19. They're almost like Will Smith. They're like, please, please. Ridiculous. <laughs> it was sentencing day for a Freeport, Long Island woman who ran over a man twice in a parking lot, killing him. She and- who is the Gypsy Rose Blanchard? Initially blamed the car, then pleaded guilty. CBS 2's Carolyn Gussoff was in the courtroom today. Kathleen Donnelly of Freeport heading to jail for six months for criminally negligent homicide. A site the family. Again, if a man did this, he would get five years. Six months? That's nothing. Family of the man she ran over has spent three years fighting for. I was not. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have a lot of listeners overseas. I'm telling you right now, they must have such better laws and justice system over in the UK. Because here in America, we fail over and over again. I'm going to let my brother's death go without getting some justice for him. Thank God. Oh, well, I don't feel like listening to New York accents. Man. It is so weird how you have this judge. And you just get a random judge. And she can just determine someone's life. And then you get a jury. And it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of idiots. And you're hoping that they do the right thing. Speaking of this idiot, there's this guy who is seen urinating in the middle of a plane cabin. And he looks very drunk. And um, you know what's weird? It's like I've been drunk on an airplane before. And uh, I don't know. I never once thought, hey, you know, I feel, I feel like urinating in front of everybody and committing a crime and potentially being a sex offender. Mm-hmm. I know when you're drunk, you're not thinking. But you must be next level stupid if you literally urinate. <laughs> <laughs> on an airplane in front of everybody and he's doing it so casually look up the photos online he's like so casually going to the bathroom Dude, you're a loser I saw this headline here and this is what we'll end happy hour with no! happy hot topic fitness icon Richard Simmons is celebrating his 76th birthday in a unique way mm. The guru turned 76 on July 12th, and in a rare interview, he told people he'll blow out a candle or two to ring in the new year, but quote, the candle will probably be on a zucchini. You know, I'm a vegetarian. I love Richard Simmons. He's so genuinely him. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about him, too, is Pauly Shore so desperately wants to make that movie, and he's like, nope. As for how he feels now that he's another year older, he tells the outlet, quote, I feel good. I'm grateful that I'm here, that I'm alive for another day. Mm. I'll spend my birthday doing what I do every day, which is to help people. That's how you know somebody's getting older. Because if you talk to someone who turns 35, they go, I'm grateful to live another year. But I mean, he's starting to get older. It's just day by day now. Scary. I'm so afraid of dying. This is the first interview the fitness guru has done in some time as he's been out of the public eye for years. His life update comes months after he shared that he had undergone a painful treatment for skin cancer on his face back in March. Following the health scare, Richard took to social media to encourage fans to take care of their health. Quote, I know some of you reading this have had cancer or have known someone in your life who has had cancer. Promise me you will see your doctor and get a complete checkup. I promise. The post came days after he clarified he was not dying after alarming fans with a cryptic post about his health. On March 18th, the fitness personality went on his verified Facebook page to tell fans he is, quote, dying. But hours later, he clarified his remarks, writing on X, formerly known as Twitter, quote, Sorry many of you have gotten upset about my message today. Even the press has gotten in touch with me. I am not dying. It was a message about saying how we should embrace every day that we have. Sorry for the confusion. I mean, it does make sense. We are dying, you know. I view it as every night we die. Or every time we take a nap, we die. And if we wake up, we wake up. What an exciting way <laughs> to end happy hour. We were having such a fun show. But death, I mean, it's it's a thing. It's going to happen. One way or the other. All right. It is such an uncomfortable topic because, like, everyone knows you're going to die, but you don't know what to say. You're like, yeah. But you know what's about to die? This episode. Because we're about to end it. This has been Happy Hour. 
I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. You can always leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com, ryanhoppyradio on Snapchat, and ryanhoppyradio.com. All right, here's the deal. I record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. If you're listening on the radio, search H-O-P-P-E radio on all major platforms. And um, it's on Spotify, every platform. I am so sick and tired of my voice right now. I know I shouldn't be saying that to end a show, but I'm saying I've talked for the last hour and 35 minutes. So it's a Saturday. I'm going to go have fun. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, signing off. Goodbye. <laughs> It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. <laughs> Happy hour is now over.